Okay, so we're back with KSW heavyweight champion Phil De Freeze. Massive fight coming up against Simon Bayor. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, but a lot's happened since the last time we spoke back in February. You got your revenge over Todd Duffy, which must have felt incredible for you. First of all, what was that experience like? Oh, it was great. I mean, uh, nothing against Todd. Todd. Todd's a great guy. And I spoke to him after the fight. But uh, it was symbolic in a, of the victory of like, beating a very bad time in my life and the, like how I, thought the, I could have fought the first time, you know? We spoke about in the last interview and they play it in the trailer, don't they, about all the struggles you've overcome in your life. And it's a key part of your story, isn't it? So to etch that one under your belt, to like signify that that period of your life was done, like you mentioned, it was a bit tricky time of your life going through that with the UFC and with Todd Duffy and now you're the most dominant heavyweight champion in KSW history which is absolutely awesome isn't it to see you like your opponents talking about you saying that he's watched you from your first fight in KSW he studied you since then so in his eyes you're the man so how does that seem Oh, it's great, you know, and uh, since, since I beat the issues in my head, I honestly am getting better every fight, especially now I've got Mick and Tom to help elevate me and my coach. I'm like, uh, I've grown so much from that first fight, but I'm just got to keep getting better. So what do you make of Simon Bayo? He studied you a lot. He's got a great record. Like anyone in the heavyweight division, it can all end with one shot. So what do you make of him from what you've seen? He's a great fighter, he, uh, he mixes it up very well, he can do everything, he has uh, great cardio, but like uh, 60 to 70% of all the rounds I'm doing are with Mick Parkin and Tom Aspinall, and I, I think they're better, and I'm getting pushed every single day, and I, I feel like a killer at the moment, but he's a great fighter, but unfortunately I'm just a bit better, you know. Because you are the most dominant champion in KSW history, do you like look down on the opposition from above do you feel like they are all looking up to you because he has said that he has said that he has been studying you for a while he's seen you at the top of the sport for a long time do you feel like you're at the top and everyone's looking up at you no uh, i mean now and then it does but when when it's time for a fight it's tunnel vision this next fight is the most important fight in the whole world every one of these fights is my world title fight i've got to win it you know so i forget all about that after i've won it's nice to bask in the glory yeah. but for now he is the man i've got to beat and i've got tunnel vision and i'm coming for him because you've held the belt for so long and you've defended it so many times what does it mean to you with each defense does it signify something even more like what is the motivation to keep defending this belt I want to keep winning. I never want to lose. I don't particularly want to get beat up and I want more money. It is great to set the records. I've got my Rolex. I've got my Rolex, you know. Well, it's all, word, yeah, they bet me the Rolex. Yeah. It's great to be the, the champion. But like I said, every next fight is my most important fight. It's my world title fight all over again. And I, I like it. Once you start getting complacent, thinking you're the man, thinking you don't have to put the work in, thinking you don't have to drive three hours every week to get battered off these bunch of lunatics that's when you're going to get beat you know so I keep my head level and I know you know it's, it's always, always just a punch away a loss and I think everyone wanted to see the Alistair Overeem fight at the Coliseum show we spoke about that last time and I think you mentioned that he had a bit of an injury that's why it didn't happen but you yourself weren't 100% that week anyway so that turned out for the best for both of you didn't it yeah, as fate would have it, uh, at the start of Coliseum week, I had a very bad tummy bug. I was vomiting. I had uh, diarrhea. Even on, uh, I, I was avoiding all the guys I liked the best, you know, because I, like, uh, I didn't want to shake anyone's hand or get them sick, you know. But on, on, on the fight night, I was okay, but I couldn't have cut weight. So as fate would have it, uh, the fortune smiled on me, you know, as it always does. I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> the, the card was crazy. Even though you was ill, I'm sure you enjoyed the card for what it was. Pudzinowski lost to Spilika, which... You know, Spilik is only his third fight in MMA. He has an extensive boxing background, fought the likes of Chisora, been at world level in boxing. How impressed were you with what he had to show? And is that a guy that you'd like to fight at some point? Oh, he did great. Uh, he weathered the storm early on. Uh, I think Pudzian made a mistake winging, trying to wing punches him with a guy of that calibre of striking. It's not going to work. I think he was just eager for the takedown, made a slight mistake. But uh, it could definitely be one for the future. I still think he needs to grow a little bit. I think if I got him down, it would be a different story altogether. But he's very new to the sport and he is very dangerous. He's definitely one to watch. And Pudzianowski, that was someone that you wanted to fight a few years ago. Do you feel like that could be the fight that got away for you? And do you still feel like even though that he lost that fight by knockout, that's a fight that would still sell? Like, he's a box office superstar still, isn't he, whether he wins or loses? 
Yeah, puds will sell no matter what. You know, I'd do that fight. I've got a bonus for me contract just for that fight. I haggled. I went to the trouble of haggling this bonus. And I'm never going to get my bonus. But uh, I, I'd do it tomorrow, you know. Uh, I, I like I like Pudsy. He's a good, respectful guy. We've had a bit of back and forth, but there's nothing but respect there. Hopefully we can do it one day, you know. Were you ever booked to fight him before? Was that fight ever booked a few years ago? No, it was ne never, never booked. It was uh, always, everyone's always wanted it, you know, you know, because I'm the champion. He is a, a great big star, you know, a national bloody hero of Poland. It would have been nice and I would have got my bonus, but you never know what the future's got, you know. Maybe he's on the 50, and I, I, you know, maybe 10 years from now. I think we all learned something from that Coliseum show as well. I'm sure you learned from Cage side. The knockout from guard at the bottom was absolutely insane. Do you remember that on the undergard? Oh, oh, yeah. that, I've never seen anything like it. Is that something that you're thinking, if I'm ever on bottom, that's a weapon I'm going to use in my arsenal because that's a rare, rare knockout. I've never seen that before. I mean, uh, usually when you're on top of somebody, you, the, the arms are in a position where they can't really swing at you. You want them tied up a little bit. I think the guy was a bit loose on top. But that, that, that shot... That, that guy's a, another very good professional boxer, you know, like right. world-level okay. boxer he was, so he could punch a bit. And he just got right on the button. Uh, it was amazing to see, but I'm not going to worry too much about that, you know. And Kalidov as well, he won the trilogy against Scott Askham. Massive moment for him. Every time we think he's going to leave the sport, he still comes back and sticks around. We spoke about that last time. That would be an awesome fight in the future at some point, even though he's getting on a bit. Still an absolute legend in that area. Is that something where, if that got offered to you, you're like, 100%, let's do it, potentially even in a Coliseum show? Oh, I've got a bonus for Karadov as well. When Karadov uh, beat Pudzi, and I thought he might want to fight me. I, but I've got, I wasn't a fan of Karadov until I went to Poland, and I've watched his fights. I'm, I'm his number one oh, fan awesome, now. He's unbelievable. I can't believe And Scott's my friend, you know. But uh, he's, he's just unbelievable, you know. But uh, the, the thing is, like, he is amazing. He's a, he's a legend. But I, I would probably be something like 45 kilograms heavier than something like that. But uh, I do it. But uh, I, I like the guy. I respect him. But I do like bonuses. So, you know, let's do it. <laughs> and have you got a message for Overeem? If, for whatever reason, KSW isn't on his horizon right now, have you got a message to Overeem as to why he should fight you for the heavyweight belt, potentially on one of those big stadium shows in KSW? Because that would be absolutely electric over there, wouldn't it? To see you and him square off in a stadium. Ah, oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, I sat, I sat, my seat was right next to over him, you know. I was sitting directly, oh, like, yeah, yeah. And he's a great guy, you know, a lovely guy, very very nice, very chatty. Um, we, should, we should fight each other. We should get paid. Uh, we should be happy. And that's that. We live the good life, you know. <laughs> in terms of your, you, you know, you've got an overbearing grappling style and he is renowned for that kickboxing style. How do you see you guys matching up if you ever fought? I mean, I, I, I always start fast. I can't not start fast. I feel like if you don't start fast, you start, let, like, get let, I, I always worry about letting the bitch in, you know. I don't know if you're even allowed to say that anymore. But if you let a little bitch in your head, he's going to get you. So I start as I mean to go on. I go crazy, you know. And I think uh, if I got him down, I'd have me way with him like I've had me way with everybody else. But can I get him down? That is the question. I think I can, but, but can I, you know. <laughs> and it's great that your camp coincides with Tom Aspinall's and Mick Parkins, you know, both good good friends of yours and they're both fighting on UFC London card Tom's obviously main event in Mix having his debut fight on the UFC card so first of all for Tom you know we spoke about this last time to see him come back the same month near enough a year to the weekend near enough since the injury happened that's going to be an incredible achievement for him to come back so soon and to get a win in front of the hometown crowd is going to be awesome <laughs> oh, I, it'll be great, you know, like, uh, Tom is going to be world champion, I guarantee it, you know. I didn't know it was a year, you know, that's crazy. But, uh, July, his, yeah. honestly, his knee is... Uh, for my last fight camp, uh, t Tom hadn't even tested his knee out yet, and he was sparring with us. I was like, are you, are you sure you can do this, mate? Uh, it would have been... Cause Mick was out with a bad knee, too. So I may have had to go out in the States, but I was like, Tom was like, no, I can help you out, brother. So uh, I could have I been there. The reason Tom was... Destroyed his knee again, but look, uh, his knee was 100%. It's uh, it's great. Now I, I haven't mentioned it all. I don't think it even bothers him now, and he's he's on the quest to get the top again, and he will make it. Mentally, how different is he now compared to last year? Because he's mentioned, you know, he's called himself Tommy Two Legs now. He's finally fighting with two legs uh, that are completely healthy. That was a little niggling knee injury that he'd had for a long time. What difference have you seen him in, in terms of his mentality towards the fight game now? 
I, Tom uh, he is a mental giant you know he's, uh, he's just very very strong upstairs and he's got a great attitude I would, he would never complain about his leg but his leg would lock up towards the end of hard hard sessions so he wouldn't be able to push himself a bit farther but he, he never used to whinge you know he would just go kind of, oh god the late oh you know what I mean but now that doesn't happen but uh, the man's a mental giant that's his, that's his main threat he's talented but he's, he's strong up there you know stronger than me but I'm quite tough too <laughs> <laughs> you guys really feed off each other and build each other up and it's great to see that you know you've already made it as a world champion Tom's looking to get that on his record as well UFC heavyweight champion and Mick as well what's it like for Mick as well making his UFC debut it's no easy feat trying to fight for a contract in front of Dana White himself so to do that that goes a long way in fighting in front of your home crowd doesn't it in terms of dealing with pressure Oh, Mick is, uh, he's come on leaps and bounds, you know, he came to our gym from a, like a smaller gym, I was part of this other gym years ago, and like, he wasn't where he was at, he should have been at, but he's, uh, he's getting on leaps and bounds now, you know, he's like, uh, it's just no easy rounds at all, and luckily, we're from the same home gym, so we're both elevating each other, we'll come down train with Tommy, he elevates us, we all have elevate each other, we're, we're, we could very well be the number one heavyweight gym on the planet now. Finally, what do you expect? to see from Tom against Tibora and do you see him having one more fight before getting that world title shot because he's right there now isn't he uh, uh, Tybu is great but Tom is the best I've ever seen you know he's ridiculous he's like he's like magic like he, he just does things like uh, he takes a lot of figuring out you know but uh, I think Tom wants another fight towards the end of the year and uh, I don't know if the title fight I don't know if he wants the title fight yet but uh, he, he will get it this year next and what about yourself where's your journey heading after a win Next weekend, 15th of July, who do you want next? Yeah, well, uh, Darko Stozic's fighting on the same card as me. He's, he's quite popular. If he wins, I imagine I'll, my last fight in my contract at the end of the year will be with him. Then I might even chase that $2 million off on Gardo. I want, I want your money. I want your two mil, mate. Give you it here. Boxing or PFL? Uh, I'll inquire about the two million for PFL. See if they can work with KSW. I do like KSW, but uh, we'll see what they got for us. But I do like $2 million. So when the contract's up, you're going to be exploring potentially other avenues, whether it's PFL. But, you know, PFL is apparently, you know, there's been rumours about PFL acquiring Bellator as well. So you'd have a lot more heavyweight names on your horizon if you were to go with PFL. If there was a way to sort of loophole your contract to say, oh, look, I'll have one fight with yeah. PFL whilst I'm under KSW. Is that something that you'd like to negotiate with them? Oh, I'd love to do a uh, cross promotion, but you know, KSW look after us. Uh, if the deals are similar, I'll always go with KSW because I trust them and they're, they're a good bunch, you know.